Hi friends, it's Jennifer and with the Lamb Branch Library and I'm so glad you could join me for story time today. And I'll be doing a virtual story time every Wednesday at 1030 and it's family story time for all ages. So I'm glad you are with me today. And let's start by saying hello. So can we wave hello? Can you wave hello down low? Can you wave hello up high? And can you wave hello fast? And can we wave hello slow? And today I have a special friend who would like to say hello. And this is our own special friend, Bear, and because we are going to have a story about bears. So today we are talking about winter story times, and we're gonna talk about anim what animals do in winter to stay warm. All right, now let's begin with a hello song and we'll start every story time like that, like this. So can we wave hello? Hello, my friends, hello. Hello, my friends, hello. Hello, my friends, hello. My friends, hello, my friends, hello. Now, how do you think our friend Bear stays warm in the winter? I bet some of you know. Let me see. Did I hear it? I heard somebody say it. They hibernate. And that means they go in their den where it's all nice and cozy and they sleep most of the winter. They don't sleep all the time, but for most of it, and they stay nice and warm. What do some other animals do? Do all animals hibernate? Well, we'll find out with our first story. Are you ready for a story? Are you ready for a story, Bear? Yes. All right. Well, let's... Get ready for our story with our story song, and it is to the tune of If You're Happy and You Know It. And it's If You're Ready for a Story. So if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, a winter story. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, tap your knees. If you're ready for a story, tap your knees. If you're ready for a story, a winter story. If you're ready for a story, tap your knees. If you're ready for a story, nod your head. If you're ready for a story, nod your head. If you're ready for a story, a winter story. If you're ready for a story, nod your head. Okay, last verse. If you're ready for a story, say shh. If you're ready for a story, say shh. If you're ready for a story, a winter story. If you're ready for a story, say shh. All right. Now, as you might guess, our first story is about a bear. And this is a little bear who doesn't want to hibernate when it's time and it is called Hush Up and Hibernate. And the story was written by Sandra Markle. She's the author. And it was illustrated by Howard McWilliam, and that means he made the pictures. And we have to thank the publisher, Persnickety Press, is that a funny name? And Wonder Mill Books for letting me share this with you today. So Hush Up and Hibernate. Now look at Baby Bear there. Does he look like he's maybe being grumpy or a little stubborn? He definitely looks like he doesn't like what his mama is telling him, does he? And I bet you know what that's like, because I bet sometimes you don't like to do what your grown-up tells you it's time to do either. So let's see what happens with Baby Bear. And there's a young bear and his mama. And look, look at all the trees. They're turning colors. Mama Bear lifts her head and looks at the red leaves dancing in the wind. I see winter coming, she tells her cub. It's time to hibernate. But Mama, Baby Bear says, I'm hungry. Oh. Oh, Mama Bear grunts, I guess 
so we can eat a little longer before we sleep. Away the winter, side by side, they munch on choke cherries until a flock of geese flies by. Mama Bear slowly lifts her big head and listens to their honking. Can you honk like a goose? Honk, honk, honk. Where do you think the geese are flying? Ah, I heard somebody say it. That's right, they are flying south for the winter. And that's how they stay warm. And that's called migration. They go somewhere else where it's warmer. I hear winter coming, Mama Bear says to her cub. It is time to hibernate. But Mama, Baby Bear says, I'm thirsty. So now he has another excuse. So Mama Bear leads her cub through the woods down to the lake where he can get another drink of water and look at all the beautiful trees and the mountains with the snow in the background. So when a fish swims by, Baby Bear tries to catch it, but splish, splash, sploosh, he misses. I think that fish is in a hurry to hibernate, he says, but Mama Bear snorts. <laughs> Fish don't hibernate. Neither do voles, the owls, or the rabbits. And voles are kind of like mice. So see, not all animals hibernate, do they? No fair, Baby Bear says. Why can't I stay up all winter? Bears just aren't supposed to. Mama Bear sighs because when winter comes, there won't be any choke cherries to eat, no grubs, no bugs, no fish either because the lake freezes over. Baby Bear stamps his feet. Can you stomp your feet like Baby Bear? Stomp, stomp. I don't care, he says. I'll find food somewhere, Mama Bear says. Oh, but there's another reason that winter is not good for baby bears. What do you think it is? See, oh, hungry wolves don't hibernate either. They hunt all winter long. Can you howl like a wolf? Ow, ow. And so do mountain lions. They might catch you without me around to keep you safe. You won't be with me, baby bear's jaw drops. Well, no, says Mama Bear, I will be hibernating. And Mama Bear plods off to the den. Baby Bear stays, but only for a minute, because looking around, he sees the woods are full of shadows. <gasps> Could wolves be hiding there? <gasps> or mountain lions? He better go with Mama and stay safe. <sighs> Baby Bear runs as fast as he can to catch up with Mama. And when they reach their den under the big old tree, they crawl in and curl up. Is Baby Bear finally ready to hibernate? Hmm, but Baby Bear wiggles and wiggles some more. Mama Bear puffs. What's wrong now? I can't hibernate, says Baby Bear. This bed is too hard. So first he was hungry, then he was thirsty, and now the bed's too hard. So the bears crawl out of the den. Mama paws more leaves inside until snowflakes fill the air. Winter is here, she tells her cub. It really is time to hibernate right now. But Mama, Baby Bear says, I can't hibernate yet. What do you think his excuse is now? Uh, let's see. I have to say goodbye to the fish and the moose, the owls, the rabbits, and the voles. I'll go fast and hurry back. And Baby Bear starts to run off. And Mama Bear charges after him and roars. That's enough. She's had it with his excuses. And he needs to get in the den to be safe. But Baby Bear comes back. And then Mama nudges him back to the den and she says, nose to nose, 
Now, hush up and hibernate. With the winter wind howling outside, mama bear and baby bear curl up side by side and hibernate. So finally, baby bear is hibernating. And there they are. There's the opening to the den and look at all the snow. They got in there just in time, didn't they? And you can hear the bear snoring. And they move around a little and grunt and snore some more. And look outside, we see some of the animals that are not hibernating. There's a cardinal and the bluebird. Oh, we see a little stoat in the background. It's like a weasel and they turn white in the winter. And rabbits and a deer or an elk and a fox. So lots of animals do stay out in the winter. Mama, baby bear whispers in her ear, can you hear me? And Mama Bear snuffles. What is it, dear? What do you think he's going to say now? <gasps> is it spring yet? And Mama's like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. They just started hibernating. It's not spring yet, is it? Silly baby bear. And here we can see, we talked about some of the animals that didn't hibernate, like the voles and the fox and owls and geese and ducks fly south for the winter. But here we can see a marmot, a chipmunk, snapping turtle, and snakes. And those are other animals that do hibernate. Now, what do you think the animals that don't hibernate and don't migrate or go south for the winter do to stay warm? Well, some things they do is they eat lots of extra food, so they get fatter, and their fur gets thicker in the winter. Now, we're going to do a little song where we talk about how people and animals stay warm in the winter. And it's called Winter's Coming Soon, and it's to the tune of a song you know. So it's to the tune of the wheels on the bus. So, are you ready? So, we're going to talk about bundling up. And then we're going to talk about how bears sleep in their den. And we're going to sing about how frogs and toads bury themselves down in the mud. And we're going to talk about how ducks and geese fly south for the winter. And then we're going to put on our hats and our gloves. So are you ready? All right. The weather's getting cold, so bundle up. Bundle up, bundle up. The weather's getting cold, so bundle up. Winter's coming soon. Now what do the bears do? The bears in the den sleep all the time, sleep all the time, sleep all the time. The bears in their den sleep all the time. Winter's coming soon. The frogs and the toads go deep in the mud, deep in the mud, deep in the mud. The frogs and the toads go deep in the mud. Winter's coming soon. The ducks and the geese go flying south, flying south, flying south. The ducks and the geese go flying south. Winter's coming soon. Now the people in the town put on hats and gloves, hats and gloves, hats and gloves. The people in the town put on hats and gloves. Winter's coming soon. All right, great job. Now we've had a story about animals that hibernate. Now we're going to have one about an animal that's supposed to migrate. Do you remember who flies south for the winter? <gasps> Ducks. And the story is called Duck at the Door. And Jackie Urbanovic wrote the story and made the pictures. So she, they are very talented because they can do both stories and illustrations. 
and this is published by HarperCollins, and we have to thank them for giving me permission to share this with you today. So, duck at the door. So, let's see. Uh, we see this poor little duck out in the cold and snow. And that's not where ducks are supposed to be. Oh, poor thing. And it's windy. What's going to happen to him? Let's see. There he is. It was a quiet night until thunk, creak, knock, knock, knock. Someone's at the door. But who? Who could it be? Let's go ask Irene, all the animals said. She always knows what to do. Who do you think Irene is? Oh, uh, Irene is their grown-up. Irene, cried Brody. Help, someone is knocking at her door. And it's the middle of the night, said Irene. Who could be knocking at the door? And that's one thing you should remember, too. When someone knocks at your door, do you go and answer it? Do you look out the window to see who it is? No, you should go tell your grown-up. So let's see what Irene does. She went to the door and it is a poor little duck. Irene brought the duck inside. My name is Max, he said. I was born in the spring. And I loved it, so I stayed behind when my flock flew south because I thought I would love winter too. But it turned out to be cold and very lonely. And he didn't love winter, did he? Poor Max. Well, winter isn't so bad when you have a warm home, said Irene. At first, Max had a lot to learn. So he didn't know what a telephone was, he didn't know how to drink from a glass, and he didn't know how to read. So he learned lots of new things while he was staying with Irene and her pets. In January, he learned to use the remote control. He enjoyed Wild Kingdom and World Wide Wrestling. In February, he discovered he had a flair for cooking. He's watching the cooking channel. By March, he had made himself right at home. Look, he's in Irene's bath. But by April, it was clear Max had learned too much. Maybe he's made himself a little too at home. He's hogging the remote. No one else can watch what they want to watch. And Dakota, Coco, and Jesse Bear got tired of Max's new recipes. He made things like tofu surprise, shish kebab a la Max, and Max's seaweed chowder. Hmm, doesn't sound like anything that cats would like. And Brody was just tired because Max liked to sleep in Brody's bed and Brody just couldn't sleep as well. Someone had to talk to Max, but who? Who should talk to Max? But just then Max burst into the room yelling to the, listen to the quacking. He heard his duck quacking, quack, 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 quack. My flock has returned. I can't wait to see them. He said, Irene, please keep my chef's hat. And Brody, you can have my rubber duckies. But I will miss you all so much. And after many hugs, Max left to go with his flock. So with Max gone, life was ordinary again. The cats went back to eating regular cat food. No one played keep away with the remote, so everyone got a turn watching their shows, and Brody didn't have to share his bed anymore. Life was so quiet that by October, everyone was happy to hear the sound of, what do you think they heard? 
That's right, they heard quack, 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 quack. And when there was a knock at the door, everyone was hoping the same thing. <gasps> Could it be Max? Is it Max? Did Max come back? What do you think? Is it Max? It was. Look, there's Max. Max, they shouted with joy. Are you staying with us all winter, they ask. Yes, said Max. Me and my whole flock. Everyone looked at Irene. Oh, what are they going to do with all those ducks? They were hoping Irene would say something. What do you think Irene's going to say? She just said, welcome home. She was so glad to see Max. But what do you think they're going to do with all those ducks? Would you like to have that many ducks in your house? I don't think so. They would be pretty messy. All right. So that is all I have for you today. And I like to end story time with a little goodbye song. So we're going to wave goodbye. Story time is over. Wave goodbye. Story time is over. Wave goodbye. Story time is done. And I hope that you had fun. Story time is over. Wave goodbye. All right, and I'll see you next week. Um, again, it'll be live on Wednesdays at 1030. But of course, you can always watch the recording later. And just keep in mind that even though we currently have our buildings closed to the public, we are still offering curbside pickup for materials. You can put them on hold through the catalog on the website or give us a call. And you can uh, also schedule your pickup through the website or give us a call for that. And we have various grab and go kits kits to go for the kids, um, including an early literacy kit that goes along with our story times. So until next week, um, read a good book and stay warm.